Hi, today we're summarizing the changes for patch 8.7, the mid-season patch, in case you forgot. You can already see the skins for this patch in the background. This is the Stranger Things Battle Pass patch as well. Now let's get into the changes. Ranked is going to get a reset for Masters and Grandmasters, and the ban count is increased from 5 to 6 per team in Duel. We're not going to talk about all the bug fixes, but one that we need to mention here is Bumba Spear, which is finally meant to work properly and should give you bonus damage and health for jungle monsters, bosses and structures. We'll see if it actually works. The Conquest map sees various changes, with a new side objective for dual lane being the Draugr, a split of the Harpies on the dual side, as well as a new Harpy camp on each side of the solo side, and there is also a new buff, the green buff for support, which grants you MP5 and HP5, as well as additional health that scales with your own protections. Various buff upgrades also saw changes, so refer to the patch notes if you want to see the details of that. Meditation Cloak is getting a rework and may finally be a viable item. Instead of doing a single burst heal, the base version now heals over time, providing 8 plus 5% of the allies missing health and mana each tick, and this has 4 ticks in total. Keep in mind that this is missing health and mana, so the lower it is, the more you get. The upgrade also reduces a cooldown with each tick by 0.5 seconds now. The cooldown of Meditation Cloak is relatively long with 160 seconds. Slendering Spear also gets a rework, now dealing 10% of the current health of the target as a true damage and reducing shields by 50%. Targets hit by Sunder also take 5% additional damage for 5 seconds. This was nerfed since PTS. This can stack up to 2 times because the relic has 2 charges. These are 2 individual shots with separate cooldowns. The upgraded version deals 15% of the target's current health has a 75% shield reduction and increases the damage the target takes by 10%. Since the PTS nerf, each individual shot has a cooldown of 110 seconds, so a total of 220 seconds for both shots. Bracer of Undoing has been removed from the game, instead we now have Bracer of Radiance. This allows you to place a free ward on the ground. This ward provides 10% increased power to allies that step into its relatively small radius if they're above half health or 10% movement speed if they are below 10% health and both is for 8 seconds, so it lasts quite a while. This ward lasts for 90 seconds and the relic has a cooldown of 100 seconds. If the ward gets destroyed, the cooldown of the relic is reduced by 20 seconds. The upgrade version only changes that the ward turns from a normal ward into a sentry ward. Again, the radius in which you get the extra power movement speed is very small, it is not the entire radius of a ward, if you're thinking that. Moving on to normal items, boots and shoes have been removed from smite and so has elixir of speed. Instead, you now get movement speed by leveling up from level 1 to 7. At level 7 you have 18% movement speed, the same amount as boots provided previously. Because of this change, some tier 2 items have been adjusted as well. Enchanted Spear had its magical penetration reduced from 10 to 5 and its magical power increased from 30 to 40. Heavy Mace had its penetration reduced from 10 to 5 as well, but its cost decreased from 1500 to 1450. The upgrades don't receive the same price reduction. The Kaifal had its attack speed reduction decreased from 10% to 7% per stack, but in return had its physical power increased from 30 to 35. Mystical Mail had its damage changed. Instead of dealing 40 damage per tick at all times now, it deals 30 damage per tick plus 1 per level, so it starts at 31 damage and scales up to 50 damage per tick, meaning it's weaker in early game but has more value in late game, which I think makes this a very interesting choice. Wing Blade had its crowd control reduction reduced from 20 to 10% because there's a good chance it's going to be fairly popular among supports now. Staff of Merlin received a rework and then a major overall to the rework. The power was decreased from 110 originally to 85 in the latest nerf. Additionally, the passive was changed. Using your ultimate now provides you with uncapped cooldown reduction starting at 70% right after using the ability. This cooldown reduction then decays over the next 4 seconds and slowly goes down towards 40%. So instead of using one ability twice in a row, you can use two or maybe even three abilities if you're very lucky relatively quickly again after using them after the old. I honestly think, especially with the reduced power, the latest version may actually be weaker than the original by a fair bit. 
Warflag and Warbanner are receiving a rework. Getting an assist on an enemy death or minion death provides 1% movement speed and 2% attack speed for 8 seconds and this is for all nearby allies and can stack up to 10 stacks. Whenever Warflag is above 4 stacks, each time you damage an enemy guard, you restore 15 health and mana to all nearby allies and you also gain 8 gold. Contrary to what was said on the patch notes, this doesn't include damage over time. It currently includes basic attacks as well as damaging abilities once. So this is something that probably works best on supports with relatively high attack speed or ranged attacks, of which there aren't all too many. So in my opinion, this isn't as great as it sounds, though maybe hyper-aggressive Erlang supports or something could make it work. The upgrade provides 2% movement speed and 4% attack speed. And if you buff 4 stacks, you restore 1.25% health and 1.25% mana to nearby allies when you hit an enemy guard. Instead of providing you with additional gold, the upgrade version refreshes these stacks whenever you hit an enemy, meaning you can continuously keep this going in a teamfight. Corrupted Bluestone has also been reworked. The physical power has decreased from 60 to 50 and the item now provides 150 health, making it a bit more useful for solo laners in that regard. The corruption stacking works differently now. Previously, you had to hit basically all enemies on the team with an ability in order to get the maximum effect. Now, hitting multiple enemies still gives you multiple stacks, but you can also just hit one target with multiple abilities to receive multiple stacks. So if you have a guard with very short cooldowns, you can even get five stacks from one target. Each stack now provides 10% attack speed instead of 15% attack speed, but each stack now also provides 4% increased protections. So for example, if you hit an enemy with two abilities and no one else, then you'd still get 20% attack speed and 8% protections. The cleave healing from Death Toll has been increased for melee guards specifically from 50% to 75%. And the same thing applies for Death Embrace as well. This could make it an interesting option for cleaving soul laners. Berserker's shield can now only be built by assassins and warriors. The attack speed is increased from 15 to 25% and the physical protection on the item is increased from 20 to 35%. This should make the item a fair bit more valuable while not letting hunters abuse it. Shogun's Kusari also sees a significant buff, now no longer providing crowd control reduction but getting 150 health in return. Additionally, the attack speed provided by the Aura is increased from 25 to 30%. This in my opinion makes this a very valuable pickup for solo lane basic attack focused guards. Serrated Edge has its physical power increased from 25 to 35, which along with the recent passive changes makes this a pretty potent damaging item. Mannequin Scepter receives changes that will likely finally bump it into viability. The burn damage is increased from 12 over 2 seconds to 16 plus 5% of your physical and magical power over 2 seconds. The amount of maximum stacks is reduced from 4 to 3. The health restored is increased from 15 to 3% of your maximum health and the mana restored goes from 15 to 5% of your maximum mana. As such, this is a significant sustain boost especially for cleave guards. Mannequin Maze, the upgrade has its health restore and mana matched to the same values, 3 and 5%. I would still prefer Hidden Blade on most gods. Sentinel's Gift receives some buffs to compete with Benevolence better, decreasing the cost from 600 to 550 and increasing both magical and physical protection from 7 to 10. We'll see if that'll make a significant difference. Conjure Gem now provides 100 mana to make it work better with Book of Thors primarily. Vampiric Shroud has its health increased from 75 to 100 and its physical protection increased from 10 to 15, which in my opinion makes this a much more valuable starter. This is especially important of the context of the upgrades also being buffed. Bloodsoaked Shroud has its physical protection increased from 40 to 55, has its health restore increased from 12 to 2% of your maximum health per target that your ability hits, and the mana restore from 6 to also 2% of your maximum health. According to this, I think they mean maximum mana, I'm not quite sure. The bonus lifesteal has in return been removed from this item. The other upgrade, Sacrificial Shroud, has its power increased from 100 to 115. Warrior's X receives a further buff, increasing the passive bonus damage and health steal from 30 to 35 plus 1 per level meaning effectively it's a 10 damage difference because 5 of that is healed to you and 5 more is taken away from the enemy. 
Atalanta's bow gets its power increased from 35 to 40. Once again, this item may end up with a fair bit of stat bloat and be valuable through that alone. Leather Cowl gets 7 MP5 and Hunter's Cowl gets 15 MP5, so they both can be used a little bit more effectively by ability-based hunters. Warding Sigil Heads is cost decreased from 700 to 600, meaning you can build it in combination with Breastplate and a Chalice as well now. Tainted Steel gets changed a little bit. The healing reduction of the item is reduced from 20% to 15%, but in return you are now healed for 100% of the healing reduced, which should make this a much better early game healer counter. Tainted Amulet, the upgrade that already follows the same idea, has in return got its healing reduction increased from 20 to 30%. Tainted Breastplate, which is already the stronger anti-heal option, gets its physical power increased from 40 to 50, and its magical power increased from 60 to 75. So all of these items are a fair bit more valuable in my opinion and are worth considering more in matchups where they are usable. Jade Emperor's Crown has its health increased from 150 to 200. I imagine this will not make it compete with Sovereignty that well, but we'll have to see. Tyrannical Playtelm has its cost reduced from 2600 to 2400. It was just a little bit too niche. Moving on to Gods, Amaterasu receives two changes. Her Heavenly Reflection will now charge quicker both from dealing and taking damage, and her ultimate deals higher base damage on higher ranks, going from 80 to 240 to now 80 to 260. Artemis receives buffs to her Transgressor's Fate, her traps, increasing the base damage from 25 to 85 to 35 to 87 per tick, as well as decreasing the cooldown from 18 to 10 seconds to now 14 to 10 seconds. Vengeful Assault her movement speed increase is boosted from 20 to 25% and the cooldown of the ability is reduced from 18 to 14 seconds to 16 to 14 seconds, generally buffing her early game a fair bit. Baba Yaga gets a buff to her 3 blast off, decreasing the cooldown from 16 to 14 seconds and to her ultimate increasing the shield health scaling from 15% to 25% while the knockback strength is increased from 330 to 400. I think these are pretty massive buffs and her knockback will probably set up her own ult better as well, so I expect to see a fair bit more Baba Yaga. Burn Sumni receives a bunch of buffs. His basic attacks apply 5 instead of 2 Hysteria now. His Vivid Gaze applies 15 instead of 10 Hysteria per hit, meaning 2 of them are enough to fully stack it apparently. And Consigned Spirits, the 2, has its cooldown decreased from 15 to 11 seconds to 13 to 11 seconds. As such, I also expect to see more Samdi. Daji has a 1000 cuts cooldown reduced from 13 to 11 seconds. Hachiman's 1 Eagle Eye now has 4 shots at all ranks, and the cooldown scales down from 12 seconds to 10 seconds instead of being 12 seconds at all ranks. Additionally, the mana cost is reduced from 50 to 90 to 50 at all ranks. His 2 Heavenly Banner has its physical power scaling increased from 45 to 55% and the attack speed it provides from 5 to 15% to 10 to 20%. Hades gets the cooldown of Devourer's Souls reduced from 11 to 10 seconds and when his ultimate Pillar of Agony damages an enemy, this even applies for minions, all of Hades' other abilities have their cooldown reduced by 0.2 seconds, so he will quite often end up with another set of his abilities after using his ultimate. Habor has the base damage of his one water cannon increased from 60 to 260 to 80 to 260. Hell gets a damage increase to her one decay and dark form from 50 to 60%. The mana cost is reduced by 10 and the same mana cost reduction is applied to the light form to restoration as well. While in dark stance her other damaging ability repulse also has its scaling increased from 70 to 75%. Hera gets buffs to Argus with every single one of his hits now having 5% increased scaling, so both the first and second hit from 30 to 35% and the last hit from 40 to 45%. Additionally, her one Royal Assault gets a buff to its base damage on higher ranks from 80 to 280 to now 80 to 300. Human Gunner's base damage is increased from 9.6 to 10.4% per tick and Submerge has a movement speed increase from 25 to 35%. Kali gets a bunch of buffs primarily targeting her early game. Her base mana is increased from 205 to 225, her 1 has its mana cost reduced from 70 to 60, her 2 has the blade damage increased from 35 to 75 to 37 to 85, meaning the total is increased from 105 to 225 to 111 to 255. 
and the mana cost of her 3 is also reduced from 70 to 60. Mulan's base health is increased from 480 to 490, her base health per level is increased from 82 to 84, Cross Strike has its physical power scaling per hit increased from 30 to 35, so the total is increased from 30 up to 90 to 35 up to 105. Grapple now also provides 5% protections when mastered, the movement speed still remains on the ability as well. And the protections while grappling is increased from 20 to 40 to 25 to 45. Odin gets both of the Lunge and Raven Shout cooldown decreased from 16 to 12 seconds to 15 to 11 seconds, and Gangnir's Might 3 gets its physical power scaling from the throw increased from 50 to 60%. Oleron, who also benefits from the Boots removal, has the magical power scaling on Overflowing Divinity increased from 15 to 25%, and his ultimate Sanctified Field has its cooldown decreased from 140 to 100 to now 120 to 100, and he also gains 40% crowd control reduction while he's in the area of his ultimate. Ratuska's Acons have been changed, with their movement speed being decreased to more appropriate levels, now offering 2% on the first rank of the Acon, the tier 2 providing 4%, and all tier 3s providing 6%. This is on top of the normal movement speed that you get by leveling. Susano's ultimate and Terra's 2 can now be fired after dying. Thor's damage increasing passive Warrior's Madness has its radius increased from 35 to 55 units, meaning more enemies can proc it easier, and his ultimate Envelope of Dawn gets a scaling increase from 90% to 100%. Thor's Hieroglyphic Assault gets a scaling increase from 20% to 25% per shot. Tiamat gets her split push capabilities lowered. When the serpents attack a phoenix or titan, but not tower, they now take one pip of health in damage, meaning they die after two hits. The duration of the beast that you can summon is also decreased from 30 to 15 seconds. Freya has the mana cost on her 1 and 2 reduced from 60 to 80 to now 45 to 65. Nox Shadowlock has its minion damage increased from 50 to 190 to 50 to 210, and the scaling from 40 to 50%. Yemoja no longer gets Omi from Mana MP5 and instead gets one Omi at level 6, 11 and 16, and Mana and MP5 are now converted to health at the rate of 20%, which is the same as Kukulin. Her 1 now has a delay after using it twice, so if you use the Bubble and the Moonstrike, afterwards there's a small delay before you can use it again. Additionally, the base damage of the Bouncing Bubble is increased from 30 to 170 to 40 to 180, but the post-fire of the ability is increased from 0.3 seconds to 0.43 seconds. This makes a pretty significant difference when you use the ability. The ultimate cooldown, Rivers Rebuke, is also increased from 110 to 120 seconds. Transcendence has its cost increased from 245 to 260, which is a revert on the pricing. Post PTS, Stonecutting Sword also had its cost decreased from 2350 to 2250, but the protection reduction debuff also reduced from 10 to 7 per stack, and the same goes for the buff to yourself as well. The initial slow of Gilgamesh's Winds of Shamash is reduced from 20 to 30% to 20% at all ranks now. Additionally, the root at the end of the ultimate no longer cripples, so you can get out a little bit easier. So as you can tell, we had a ton of changes here, which even in short form took almost 20 minutes. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you're new to the channel, feel free to sub button and hit the bell so you get notified of other videos about the upcoming changes and everything that is happening in Smite. And other than that, I hope to see you for the next one soon. Duke Sloth, out.